making a YouTube video. Yay! I know, some of you have requested it. It's time to actually get going with it. My name is Lizzie. I professionally make cosplay wigs. I've been making them for about three years now. A lot of wig makers like to keep all of their secrets to themselves. I'm here to help you create beautiful, strong cosplay wigs that will last through many cons. And with that, let's get started. Before you start any type of cosplay wig, you have to have reference photos. It's so important. So here I have Link from Ocarina of Time. I'm going to break them down into bite-sized pieces so you can understand how I tackle a wig commission. So first things first, there are three different pieces to this wig. There's the back, the locks on the side, and the bangs. It's so important to stay organized when you're making wigs because it can, it can get out of control and pretty confusing. So first and foremost, when you start a wig, we're doing bottom to the top. Do not start top to the bottom. You're gonna screw up different dimensions of hair or how it's laying on him nicely. So bottom to top. So the first thing is we're gonna start in the back. Then after that, we're actually going to go to the side locks because that's kind of like the medium part of his head. And then lastly, we'll be doing the bangs. Lastly, not the first thing, even though it's the most distinguished thing. You want your hat to fit perfectly on your head. So we're going to start from the back to ensure that that's going to happen in the first place. If you start with the bangs in the front, you could make it way too chunky where your hat won't fit. All right, let's get started with wig making. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with your wig is set up the ear tabs along your ear line. It's very important so it fits nicely. Next, you can section off the back of the wig. Take a small piece and you're going to crimp this. So take a 200 degree Fahrenheit, nice crimper. Go ahead and crimp the hair and then brush it out while it's hot. You have to have it hot, otherwise it's not gonna build as much volume as you need. Go ahead and move on to the back of the wig. We're gonna harvest some wefts from there so we can make the false hairline. I took about five rows of wefts, just about, from the back of the wig. Go ahead and slither cut it. Take all of that hair, set it to the side for later. Now we're going to actually thin the back of the wig. We need to make sure that the back of the wig is really nice and flush to our head. Otherwise, you're gonna have weird bumpy marks. So that's why I take glue and I smoosh it all the hair down into kind of like a cap. Go ahead and point cut deep into your wig ends. This is gonna feather and taper those ends so it's not so chunky. You can take as much off as you'd like. I took off a fair amount, I would say like 50% of the hair to be honest, to make it nice and even. Go ahead and double check the ears and take your steamer. Take your steamer and bend the hair. This is gonna allow the hair follicles to warm up and kind of melts into place since it's plastic. Go ahead and do that with all of the layers of hair. You can choose how much layers you want to do at a time. If you want to do one, fine, get used to it. And then I think I did about three to five. Go ahead and do this throughout the whole back of the wig. It's, it's going to make everything look nice and tapered and pretty. And always use your comb, please. Go ahead and align where you want the side locks of the wig to be, cut it to where you think, and remove the bulk from the ends. This is going to make a nice little taper to the bottom of your wig. If you do not taper it, it's going to look kind of awkward, and then if you squeeze it with hairspray trying to make it nice, it's not going to look as nice as you want. Tease the inside of the hairlock, not the outside, and spray it with some hairspray. Go ahead and take any type of heat that you have and just solidify it in there, lightly pick it out. Go ahead and steam the ends of the hair over by the lock. The heat is nice because the steam is actually going to manipulate the hair to bend into any shape that you want. So you can make it really nice and tight and flush to your face. So go ahead and do that and make it nice and neat. Go ahead and do the ears. We want this hair not to move. So I put some glue behind the ear and laid down some hair, smooshed it together and it worked out pretty well. I'm going to go back to the lock and make his extra little detail tassel on his little side lock there. Clean up the ends, remove the bulk, so important, remove the bulk. It's not going to look as nice if you don't do that. Steam it again, 
I actually went back and I clipped a little more off because as I was steaming it, I noticed the point wasn't as nice as I wanted it to be. So I went back in and I reworked it again. You're not necessarily going to get it on the first try. It's going to take a couple tries to get that point nice. But don't worry. Patience goes a long way, especially in wig making. So go ahead and use your fingers to mold it nicely. The hair will obey your hand and keep its shape. Now we're gonna do the middle parting. Go ahead, find the middle part. We have to build up our own middle part because this wig just didn't work for that. So we're taking out about 10 to 15 rows of the wefts. He's gonna look a little bald, it's fine. We're actually gonna fix him up in the end. Just trust the process. Put those wefts to the side, remove the bulk from the top of the wig. We need to make sure that the, the hat is gonna fit really nicely and it's going to taper really nice for us too. So I'm actually removing bulk from underneath the hair so it'll taper really nice. Make sure you're removing bulk from the ends of the hair too. So when you steam it down, it's gonna steam beautifully for you. I took a piece of felt that I had traced out and I am actually reattaching it to the top of the bald cap of the of link wig. The reason why is I want the cap to be reinforced so my glue parting doesn't crack when you're taking on and off the wig. I went about two inches deep for my bangs. That's as deep as I wanted to go. You can go deeper if you'd like. Just watch out for the cap. I also added a area for the false hairline to be glued to. This is going to be huge. It'll keep everything nice and neat and tidy. And remember, this is kind of like a like a plastic sculpture. So we want everything to be set in its place. So this is what I came up with. And now we're going to glue up, up the wefts. Go ahead and lay down your wefts one piece at a time and clean up the ends. Now we're going back to the back of the wig. I took some hairspray, put the little hairs down, put some glue, smooshed it all over the place. We do not want any of that hair moving when we're taking on and off the wig. Go ahead and comb the hair into the glue. Don't just lay it down. Go ahead, take some hair. I took about maybe two inches, just about like half my finger width, just, just about, and uh, laid it down. I tapered out the edge a little bit and then laid down some glue. I'm going to take my silicone paddle brush and smush it down. All of that glue needs to be in those fibers nicely. I clipped off the end and glued it down the weft, like pushing it back into its place. So it's gonna stay there. And yeah, so I did that next. Here you can see me taking the glue, smushing it really nice into that hair and putting it on the wig as well. So that it'll adhere nicely to each other. Go ahead and push it in there and secure it in place. Remember to feather cut the ends of your wefts that you just made so they're nice and tapered. That way it's going to look even nicer and invisible when you are combing it back into the wick again. So go ahead, comb it down. Don't use hairspray yet, just comb it down into the glue. The glue is way stronger than any of the hairspray. The hairspray is too temporary. So go ahead and put that down. And then now we're gonna do kind of like a finishing polishing touch with the hairspray on the top. And he turned out pretty nice and smooth. So the next part is the bangs. We're gonna tease only by the root. Do not tease the outside points of the hair. If you do that, your points are not gonna look as nice as they could be. So go ahead and clean it up just by slightly brushing the ends of the hair, but not the inside where you're teased. If your hair is having issues standing up for you, you can add a little bit of heat and it'll, it'll work. We're gonna really over exaggerate the bang. That way we're gonna have a ton of height. I think I had about three to four inches of height on his hair. And it's, it's gonna be life changing going like this. The bigger it is, the bigger the hair poof is, the more you're gonna condense it back into its shape, the stronger your wig is gonna be. I did use a little bit of hairspray when I would tease it just to hold the teasing together. I parted it in the middle, brushed out the ends just ever so slightly, picked it out. Don't go too deep with the picking, just lightly. We just want to make sure those hair fibers at the ends are nice and free so we don't have really messy points. It's fine for the roots to be all messy because nobody's going to see it, so it's going to be hidden in the hair. 
go ahead and brush it out. Brush out the back too. We don't want to glue extra webs. That's just unnecessary. Work smarter, not harder. And we got like this block of seagulls haircut going on. It's totally fine. It's going to work out in the end. So now we're going to actually shape the bangs itself. Go ahead and tease the inside of that bang a lot. We want this thing to be as hard as a rock when we're gluing the hair on. By making it as hard as a rock, the glue is going to adhere way more nicely and even when we put down the hair. I used some se I used steam to kind of clean up those edges and also for the little flyaways, I used a little bit of hairspray and rounded it out with my finger. Go ahead and play around. I think it took me about three times to get the correct um, even proportion on the bang. So take your time, don't rush it, it's fine, really. So go ahead and take your steamer and your rat tail comb. Be careful not to burn yourself, it really hurts. It's not comfortable. Save your fingers if you can. Go ahead and just keep working it until it does what it needs. Use your hand as a tool, but carefully. Now I am re-gluing back in hair wefts because I want to build up that strength in the middle. As you can see, when I do that, I can put my wefts that I had created and put it into the crevice of the bang parting. If I had done that before, I don't think the wefts would have laid as nicely. Go ahead and keep working on it. It's going to take a little bit to manipulate the hair into its spot. Use your paddle, your little makeup paddle guy, and push it in really nice into that crevice. We're going to glue the heck out of the bangs because we want this as hard as a rock. The harder the better. So go ahead and put as much glue as you can without oversaturating it because you want it to be at least somewhat a little flexible because your head is going in here. I used some hot glue to actually fill in those little blank spots that need just a little more strength to them. If you glue something over something that's a hole, it's kind of like gonna collapse in, right? So I don't want to do that. So for the little antennas, I'm actually going to use my steamer and I'm going to steam down all of the hair, brushing as I go. This is gonna keep it nice and neat and pretty. Go ahead and just keep doing that until you get right about where you want. Now we have this wonderful McDonald's M that just looks so satisfying. The arcs are perfect. The hairline is really hard. It's ready for wefts. Go ahead, take your wefts. We're going to remove some of the bulk on the ends, but not too much. Use your fingers to just kind of uh, hold the hair and taut enough so that you can clip it off a little bit. Lay down your wefts, brush it out for yourself, and make a V at the top of it. We want it to kind of fan out nicely. As you can see, we added some glue, and then you're going to actually work it into the hairline, saturate it with glue on both sides, because we want this to really adhere to the wig and not budge. Go ahead and bend it just a little bit with your fingers. It'll help you. The hair will actually hold with the glue. It'll take some practice, but you'll get it right. It took me a couple times too. So go ahead and do it for the next one as well. You can use your scissors to clean up the points so there's a better gradient of hair, as in like it blends in nicer to each of the wefts so you don't distinctly see where one weft begins and the other one ends. Go ahead and use your fingers and smoosh it all together. So, next, the bangs. I cut it to about the length that I thought was satisfactory for his bang length. I didn't want to make them too long, and I didn't want to make them too short, but dramatic enough where it looked like a swoop, kind of like a K-pop idol's hairstyle in the guys group just about. So go ahead and use your steam and your rat tail brush. Let the steam work for itself. What it's going to do is it's going to heat up all those little itty bitty fibers and you can actually mold it into the shapes that you want it to be. So go ahead and just keep working on it. This is going to be a rough draft form for the wig. So I'm going to go back and clean it up in a little bit. All you have to do for that is just reheat it. Take your fingers and just kind of like shape it almost like a little pinch and just keep working at it. And it's going to create nice depth just like this right here. 
So I took 50% Eileen's clear tacky glue and 50% water, mixed it up in a little glass jar, and I applied it to all of my ends of Link's wig. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep the hairs all together so throughout the cosplayer's wearing, it's not a problem at all. It's gonna keep everything nice, neat, and tight so that if you get bumped into like at the convention you're not gonna have your hair fray away or anything like that it's gonna be nice and neat and to the point but make sure you really smush that glue into those tips you won't see any type of glue residue if you did the 50 50 percent uh ratio nicely it just it's a great finishing touch to the wig so next i actually decided to put some snaps on his wig i thought it would be perfect for his his cap because you know bobby pins they work but it slides it can damage the wig so if you use snaps instead it's going to help a lot more so all you have to do is just put a little hot glue on the female portion of the snap i just temporarily glued it there lightly and then i'm going to come in and whip stitch all of the pieces together chemical bonds are weaker than physical bonds Physical bonds take the cake by far. Next, we're gonna go over into the back of the wig. So we are going to actually drench the back of the wig, nicely saturate it with glue. We want it to taper nicely. And here's the finishing look. I loved how it turned out. It was so pretty. It still is pretty to this day. It looks great. Everything's nice, neat, organized, strong, which is so important and ready for its convention. I hope that I could have taught you something new about wigs today. It's, it's a lot to handle. I'm going to be making a tutorial, I think, about once a week. It depends on the commissions that I have on my customers. Some take longer than others, and there's nothing really I can do about that. Like a Miku wig compared to Link, there's going to be a drastic difference in time, right? But if you liked it, please like, subscribe, press that bell button to see when I put new material up and I hope to see you soon. Please leave me a comment about stuff that you thought was interesting or perhaps things that you still want to learn about wig making and maybe I can talk about it more in detail or perhaps even make a focused YouTube video on that content to help you out more. All right, thanks so much. Have fun cosplaying. Bye.